Hello and welcome to Jamhammer. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an easy and quick scheme for painting your Goblin Bruiser linemen to get them ready for scoring spectacular touchdowns in your next game of Blood Bowl. I'll be using paints exclusively from this box from Vallejo, which I'll leave an affiliate link to in the description below, along with all the other tools used in this video if you're interested in buying any of these for yourself. We'll be using this particular goblin from the second season starter set throughout, as it has all the examples of leather, cloth, and armor that are on these minis. I recently released an unboxing and assembling video for this box, which I'll leave a link to here. If you also bought this, or have a team featuring them, you can use this paint scheme on your trolls too. We'll be starting off then with these two spray paints, a grey prime and a white acrylic, to build up a light zenithal highlight on this goblin. I'm using these ones from Halfords, which are a great bargain if you live in the UK, as they're a bit cheaper than the bespoke miniature paints, but work just as well. If you can't get these, then any other brand that says that they're suitable for use on plastic will work fine. Also, if you have access to a paint gun, then this will be great too instead of rattle cans. If you're using a grey primer spray, then shake this vigorously for a few minutes and spray a light, even coating of this colour all over your mini. I found that using something like an old cork and some reusable adhesive like blue tack works great for single miniatures like this as you can get all the angles without leaving fingerprints on your base or getting paint all over your hands. Well, not much anyway. Allow this to dry for a few minutes and get your white paint ready next by shaking up your rattle can or preparing your paint gun. Unlike the grey prime, we want to apply the white sparingly and directly from above like this. We only want to catch the top of the model to simulate where light would naturally be hitting and allow the rest to fall back into shadow. This will start to create some interesting dimensions for our goblin here as we begin to apply our colours. As is only appropriate for a green skin Blood Bowl player, we want to get a light green paint first of all. Thin this down a little more than usual to allow that zenithal to shine through from underneath and apply this to all the exposed skin on your mini. We can really throw this colour on at speed, as it's very thin, and being the first colour we'll be painting over anything that spills over onto clothes later on in the session. Allow this first coat to dry, and then take a look at the coverage. We can see that undercoat very clearly coming through on the mini here, as that first coat of green was particularly translucent. So, we're going to apply a second coat all over the mini. We want to keep this thin again so that we don't obscure any of the details, but also to allow the white and grey to still come through and give us that light and shade. After letting this second coat dry, we have a much more solid green base on that skin now. Now the grey colour is showing through, but those raised bits along the arms and face where the white hit are breaking through and creating highlights on our mini. We can now start applying some more colours, so get a dark brown paint, thin this down too, and we want to apply this to the goblin shorts and shoes, as well as any gloves that could be on your other goblins. Try to keep this just on these parts and away from that green skin, but no worries if we do slip up at this early stage, as we'll be coming back to these mistakes later and can cover over them then. Apply this thin coat and, much like the previous step, take a look at the coverage. There was still quite a bit of grey coming through on these shorts, so I applied a second thin coat of this brown paint too. Next up, if you're painting these as the Thunder Valley green skins, then grab your black paint, thin this down too, and apply this to any armour on your minis. This goblin has a spiky kneecap, as well as an armoured toe cap on their right leg. As well as this tall chest and neck guard here. Again, try not to let this slip over, but if we do go over, make a note of it, and we'll cover it up later. As this is such a dark colour, one coat was sufficient with this paint, but if it's too thin and the grey primer is still coming through, then by all means, apply more thin coats as needed. I also noticed that this particular goblin had a bracelet on their right wrist, so I carefully based this in black too. There are a few straps and belts on these minis, 
including on this one with some straps holding the armour in place and a belt above the shorts. You can paint these with the same dark brown you used on the other leather parts like the shoes and gloves, or you can switch to a lighter brown like I'm doing here to catch these areas and add just a little variety to your models. I hadn't got this paint to the correct consistency, so you can see it's not coming off my brush very easily and it ended up spilling over quite a lot onto the goblin's shoulders. No worries, just need to cover over this later when we tidy up. Grab an off-white paint next, thin this down a little too, and then use it to paint any teeth, claws or horns on your goblins. For this particular mini, we just have a few finger and toenails, but we can also use this colour to paint any string too, such as on the front of the shorts here. Get a red paint next, and very carefully use this to pick out the eyes on your gobbos like this. There's also a model in the set who has a mushroom earring, so we can use this red paint on this too, so it looks suitably agaric. If you're painting the Black Orcs team, then using a white paint next, we want to cover over any cloth parts of the minis that represent our team's uniform. A lot of the minis have baggy vests that we can paint with this colour, one has a moon hat that we can paint with this, and our example goblin here just has a collar peeking out from under their armour at the back here. We'll move on to the metallics next, and start off with a gunmetal paint to go over any buckles, clasps, or pointy bits. So on the one we're painting here, that's just this one vicious looking spike poking out from the knee guard to paint with this colour. Get your gold next, and paint any accessories or embellishments on your goblins like earrings, bracelets, or the skull emblem on the chest armour of Argobo here. Metallic paints tend to look better over a black undercoat, so if you do notice any of these little bits on your minis, try to get a coat of black over them first, like I did for the bracelet on this model. Now that we've finished applying our paints, it would be a great time to check over the minis for any parts where you may have forgotten to apply paint or slipped over and need to correct it. For myself, I needed to paint in some of that light green around those shoulder straps that I messed up, as well as near the white bit of cloth here that I went over in several places. I also noticed that the large armour piece on this goblin protrudes up behind their raised hand, so I painted this black as I'd left it grey before. There's also still some residual green left on the belt here, as I only put on one coat of that light brown. So I'm going to go over that now, as well as the other areas I painted with this colour to ensure full coverage. And there we go, all sorted. I also used a layer of grey paint at this stage to just cover over the top of the base and start to getting it looking like flagstones, which we'll have a look at in a bit more detail in a minute. We're now ready to apply some wash all over the model. I used equal parts of Army Painter Dark Tone, Strong Tone and Water for this, but you can use any other brown and black shades that you may have from another manufacturer. We can really throw this on quickly to avoid it drying in any one area and creating watermarks. I'm also going to apply this all over the base here too, so they get a dark muddy finish. Leave your model to dry for an hour or two, and they'll be tabletop ready and all set for use in your games of Blood Bowl at this point. What we can do next though, is get a little yellow paint and mix it into your light green, just to brighten it, as well as add some warmth to the colour. Make sure this paint is nice and thin, and then we can use this to trace over those areas that have been highlighted by that zenithal undercoat. This is really useful as a guide for where light would be striking the minis from above, so along the tops of muscles and the skin here, across the shoulders, and some on the knees. We can also add this yellow into our dark brown paint and use this in a similar fashion to highlight the upper edges of our leather areas, like the trim of the shorts here, as well as along the elevated ridges in the material. Add a little of this yellow into the light brown too, and then use this to highlight the edges and raised parts of the straps and belts if you painted these with that lighter colour. Back to the yellow again now, and we can add a touch of this into our red to make a warm orange that we can use to add a highlight to the eyes of our goblins. 
Next up, we can use our off-white bone colour as is without adding any lighter colours, because the areas we're applying it to will become quite darkened by the wash stage. We can use a bit of this just to catch the tips of nails and teeth, just to re-establish the colour on these and make them lighter as they taper off. For our metallics, we can use a silver paint to add a little of the shine back into these parts that may have been dulled by the wash. So just going to run a bit on the point of the spiky bit here. We can also use this colour to pick out any buttons or rivets in the armour, like the pins on the edge of this knee armour. Add a bit of this silver into our gold paint from before to lighten this, and use a touch of it here and there to create a highlight on the accessories that we've painted gold. Moving on to the base, and we want to try to get this to look reminiscent of the black orc pitch that was included in the second season box. To try and achieve this, grab an old brush or a dry brush and work some of that grey paint that you used to base it into the bristles. Next, wipe most of this away on some paper and then lightly drag this across the base in a circular motion. We want to apply this quite thickly, especially towards the centre of the base to try and capture the appearance of the flagstones on the board. That wash has made the base quite brown, so we want to re-establish the stone colour whilst keeping the brown hue in the recesses. I'll pop a link in here to another video where we go step by step through making these bases using modelling putty if you're interested in creating them for yourself, as well as looking at a few methods for filling in the gaps in the Blood Bowl slotter bases. While I was painting this, I noticed it had these gruesome blood spatters on the board. Not too surprising considering how violent this game is and how hard these flagstones look. To try and replicate this, I'm going to take that old brush from before and mix together the red and black paints on my palette with water so it's quite runny. And we don't want to blend these colours, but instead stipple them together like this so we get some black, red and a new dark red on our brush bristles. Next we want to very carefully like a bit of this paint where we want the blood spatter to be on our base. Try not to flick this across our newly painted mini and instead direct the paint down onto the base and away from the goblin. Unless you want them to look like they were the one inflicting the violence that is. Last but not least, I'm just going to pop the mini back onto that cork and using some of our thin black paints, I'm going to apply a coat of this all around the rim. I'm going to let this dry and then apply another coat over the top for an opaque finish. And that's it, a finished Goblin Bruise alignment wearing some leather armour mixed with the black and white uniform of the Thunder Valley Greenskins. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it, if you did please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified of new videos being released. We've also painted that base so that it matches the grey flagstones of the Black Orc pitch, with a gross splash of blood thrown in for good measure too. This is Blood Bowl after all, sports fans. There'll be more Blood Bowl videos being released in the future, so please do keep an eye out for more content coming soon to Jamhammer. In the meantime, there are plenty of other videos available on the channel, including a few that are on screen now for you to click on. Thanks again for watching.